those who teach inherited sin or original sin would like us to believe that we are all born children of wrath. So we come into this world guilty, we come into this world uh, as children of wrath. And they teach uh, this from the passage in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, the first three verses. So we're going to look at uh, these passages now and in, in the context, in light of other scriptures um, in the Word of God that seem to contradict uh, this understanding if that's how you interpret uh, this passage in Ephesians. And, and break it all down so that we can come to a, uh, a true understanding of what this passage is actually saying. So in Ephesians, it's, it's the Apostle Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. They are um, those who have already been born again. They've obeyed the gospel. And so Paul can say to them, because they've obeyed the gospel, he can say to them, starting at verse 1, And you hath he quickened, or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past, not current, currently, but in time past, or old life, uh, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which we know is Satan, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we, and now Paul includes himself among, among them, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So it's this last statement Paul made, and we're by nature the children of wrath, that causes many to assume that this is teaching we're born children of wrath. We're born sinners, born sinful with a sinful nature. But in context of what was just said here, and in light of another passage in Romans, we're going to see that it cannot mean that we're born that way, because it would, it would actually contradict another passage of Scripture. But first of all, in context of this passage alone, uh, we'll, we see that Paul here is presenting uh, their past lifestyle of practicing sin. So it uses words like they walked according to the course of this world. They fulfilled the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So it says nothing at all about being born this way, but that they actually committed these sins, not inherited these sins. There's a big difference to to say that all this says they were born a certain way when it's actually talking about a lifestyle, choices they made. So here, the word nature, when we look nature up in the, in, in the concordance, in the Greek concordance, we can find out that nature can also be a, a mode of feeling and acting which by long habit has become nature. So yes, there can be a nature that we're born with, but there can also be a uh, which is an involuntary nature. We don't have any choice of, of, of the nature that we're created with. Um, but then there can be a, a, a nature that is voluntary, that we, we choose, and it's a mode of feeling and acting which by long habit has become nature. So with that understanding, we can now uh, recognize that we, we, we are able to determine the difference between the nature we're, we're created with and the nature that uh, we choose um, to um, receive when we sin. So looking back to previous videos, we've, we've established that God has made man upright. So we are created good and upright. Just like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, they were created with a good and upright nature. Um, that good and upright nature didn't cause them or force them to do good. Neither did it cause or force them to um, disobey and sin. The nature, the good and upright nature is just um, how they were created. Now, there's choice involved. When God gave a clear commandment, thou shalt not, and they made a choice to disobey God's clear command, they sinned against the nature God had created them with, the good and upright nature. And they now sinned and became dead in their trespasses and sins, and it's likened unto a spiritual death. So now they took on a new nature. They have a sinful nature now after they sinned. 
And so they're, by nature, the children of wrath. Not that they were created that way, but that through their choice of, uh, of uh, partaking of the forbidden fruit, disobeying God's clear command, they um, sinned and um, that's, that sinful nature made them the children of wrath. So when we can understand that, we then look to us today and see that we are born into this world, a sinful world, yes, but not sin's not born in us. We're born into a sinful world. We're innocent, we're spiritually alive, and we are good and upright. That's our nature that we're all created with. And so we, we come to an age where we know to refuse the evil, choose the good. We sin. When we sin, we come short of the glory of God. So now we have a sinful nature, and we are by nature the children of wrath, as Paul's saying in, in Ephesians 2 verse 3. But it all has to do with our, the choices we made and what we did. We, we walk according to the course of this world, and we fulfill the desires of the flesh and of the mind. So it, the focus is on that lifestyle of practicing sin. We're by nature now the children of wrath. We weren't born that way. We weren't born children of the devil. We, we become children of the devil when we sin and, and, and we, we come short of the glory of God. So understanding that helps us to um, uh, then be able to go to Romans chapter 2. And we can read in uh, verse 14 about another nature. Um, and we're going to be, be able to determine that it's different than the nature that, that Paul was talking about in Ephesians 2.3. But to set the context, let's go to verse 11. So Romans 2.11, it says, For there is no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, so the Gentiles didn't have the law written on stone. It was the Jews that had, had the law. But it, here saying, it's saying that the, the Gentiles had a, a, another um, a type of law. Because it says, which have not the law, they do by nature the things contained in the law. So even though they don't have the law, by nature, they do the things contained in the law. So if nature here refers to um, something that they were born um, born with, and, 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 and we combine that with the understanding in Ephesians 2, 3, that the people who teach inherited sin would say that we're, we're born children of wrath, we're born with a sinful nature that causes us to sin, then in uh, Romans 2.14, uh, but it's saying that they do by nature the things contained in the law. So it con contradicts that, that mindset. So how are we to make sense of this? And it goes back to voluntary nature and involuntary nature. So I believe that Ephesians 2.3, it's clear that it's, it's referring to a voluntary nature. Um, walking according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. When we've by that sinful nature, by sinning, by choosing to sin and disobey God, we've become the children of wrath, or we are the children of, of wrath by that sinful nature. But in, in Romans 2.14, I believe this is talking about the good and upright nature that all men are created with. And so they do by nature, the good and upright nature that they're created with, the things contained in the law. These having not the law are a law unto themselves, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So regardless of whether or not you have the law written on stone, we come into this world good and upright with the law written on our hearts and the law of our conscience. And so you can do by our good and upright nature that we created with good things, the things contained in the law. So that is possible. But um, what it's not saying is that man can make it through life without sinning. Only Jesus, he was the only one who lived a sinless life. But we can learn a principle here, is that uh, there's a good and upright nature that we're created with, and that by that nature, we do the things contained in the law. And then there's a sinful nature um, that makes us uh, children of wrath, children of the devil. 
And that is a voluntary nature. That's a choice that we make to sin and come short of the glory of God. Whereas um, Romans 2.14, this is um, the nature, the invol involuntary nature that we're created with, good and upright. And so that's how we can allow those two passages of Scripture to not contradict one another. So uh, knowing that there's a voluntary nature and an involuntary nature, we can then um, look at the two, two types of voluntary nature that the Bible talks about um, under uh, already uh, recognizing and understanding that the involuntary nature um, is a good and upright nature that we're born with. It's how we were created. God doesn't form children of the devil in the womb. He, 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 that we're all God's children when we're born. And um, when we sin, when we come to that age uh, to know the, the evil or know the good and refuse the evil or to choose the good and refuse the evil, at that point, when we sin, by having sinned, we come short of the glory of God. And that voluntary nature that sin, of sin, um, that, that, that voluntary nature is what makes us enemies of God, children of the devil, and by nature, the children of wrath. So hopefully that is clear. You can see that now in Ephesians 2, 3. That's what that is referring to. But then there's another nature. After we have sinned and come short of the glory of God, there's another nature that um, we can partake in. And this is another voluntary nature. So it's a, a choice that we have to make. Now, Jesus Christ um, died for all mankind. He um, was crucified. He was buried in, in a tomb, resurrected from the dead, and ascended into heaven. So he earned salvation for all mankind. So we can partake in what Jesus um, earned for us, partake in that salvation that he earned for us um, by faith. And um, we can turn to 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3. It talks about another nature, that when we, have, when we sin and come short of the glory of God and have a sinful nature now, we need a new nature because sin separates us from God. God cannot have fellowship with sin. And so uh, in uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3, it says, According as his divine power, talking about God's power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So when we're born again, we, are, we become partakers of the divine nature. This is referring to Jesus Christ. We put on Christ in water baptism. We're baptized into his death. We rise a new creation, having put on the new man, Jesus Christ, our old man being crucified. So we take part in the divine nature. And this is, all, this is a voluntary nature on our part. God doesn't force salvation upon anyone. He's earned it for all man. So there's nothing we can do to earn our salvation. Jesus Christ alone earned it. But we need to apply it to our lives. We need to receive what he's done. And, we need to, and that comes through obeying the gospel, through repenting of our sins, having faith in Jesus Christ and his completed work on the cross, um, being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of our sins, and then being filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking in tongues, being the sign that you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. So that is how we are, become partakers of the divine nature. And uh, so when we now go back to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, in light of all that, we can see that we're not born children of wrath. We become children of wrath. It's through this our, 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 our voluntary choice on our part. We choose um, to we, we make a choice that is either good or, or sinful. And once we sin, we now have a sinful nature. And by nature are the children of wrath. But we're all created good and upright. God does all things well. He creates and forms us in the womb. He fashions us in the womb. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. To say that uh, a baby is evil or a baby is depraved or, or guilty or uh, born a sinner, um, all this implies that God is um, f forming uh, children of the devil, sinners, uh, all that in the womb when he really is. And he's forming an innocent child, a good and upright um, 
uh, human being that uh, he's given free will. He's given choice to either go against the nature they're created with, which would be to sin, or to, to walk in that good and upright uh, nature that he's created them with. And the Bible is very clear that it, it, it speaks that all choose to um, sin. I'll, I'll make that, that choice. But it's a personal choice. No pointing the finger to Adam. No pointing the finger to your parents. But you, in your, your sins, individually have separated you from God. So this is, this is how we come to true repentance, recognizing what we have done, not what we were born with from what Adam did. It's a, a, a personal choice that you made when, when, you, when you disobeyed what you, you knew you shouldn't have. So anyway, I'll end this here, and we will continue uh, going through the New Testament, looking at those uh, passages that are most uh, commonly used to teach inherited sin, to see that it's actually not what um, they teach. All right, uh, if you have any comments, leave it in the comment section below. All right, God bless.